Now guys, that's a lot of different things I've talked about for security, and I want to tell you one thing. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to episode 6 of The Roads Less Traveled. If you guys haven't checked out the first 5 episodes, be sure you check those out. There's a link down below for that. But in today's video, we head out to Zion National Park, where I find a boondocking site a couple miles out of Zion, so I avoid the $130 a night camping fee. Then from there, we go all the way to the Grand Canyon to another great boondocking site. And then I'm going to talk to you about security when boondocking and how I secure my camper when I leave it at my boondocking spot to go into these national parks. So let's jump into today's video. Good morning, good morning from Zion. Alrighty, this is not the spot I had last night, but it is the spot I found this morning with some light. So as you can see, that's our rig and that's our view. We are actually unhooked. We're gonna stay here another night. And we are actually just taking the car into Zion, make things easier. We'll see what Zion has to offer. It's gonna be partly cloudy today. We're about, uh, I think, 68% battery, which is fine for another night if we need. But I think we should get some charge. If I was staying here for a couple more days, I would tilt up the two panels, but you know, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> We're only staying here one more day. But this is a nice little boondocking spot. There's a bunch of different people here, but it is Friday, so I assume it's gonna get a lot busier. That's why I decided to grab this spot, because I think it is uh, pretty awesome. A few moments later. All right, guys, well, we spent the day at Zion National Park. Let me say, uh, epic mountains. I mean, I've said it before, but the mountains in Utah it's crazy, all different varieties, shapes, colors, like literally it is everything that one would need to see. If there's one state that one needs to see for mountains, I would say Utah is it. Anyways, back here at the campsite, gonna watch the sunset over there. Uh, we didn't have lunch, so we're actually having a late lunch. Then I guess we'll have a little snack for dinner. But this is the camp spot. Let me just look out for snakes and stuff, make sure I don't get bitten. Oh my goodness. How about you? So there's a Winnebago Rebel right there. We looked at one of those. But uh, it's not accommodating for a long time for four people and a dog. For two people and a dog, perfect. For one person and a dog, wonderful. Um, but this actually lets the kids have space to run around. I'm gonna enjoy this view and enjoy the sunset. Alrighty guys, it is uh, 6 o'clock at night. I'm pretty beat. We are now at the Grand Canyon in Arizona. 
and uh, had to drive through the park to get to this boondocking spot. Uh, I was expecting it to be pretty busy, but it's not. Anyways, uh, the glimpse I got of the Grand Canyon might be one of the most epic scenes I've ever seen in my life. But that's for tomorrow. So, look forward to seeing it, but for now, I'm gonna relax. Alrighty guys, it is a bright and windy Sunday morning. Here is our spot in the day. Uh, we are going to now drive to see the Grand Canyon. As I mentioned last night, it looks like it's pretty much the most epic sight my eyes have ever seen. So pretty excited to see what uh, today has to offer, but it is a chilly one this morning. So let's start exploring. Alright guys, well, uh, there's some pictures of the Grand Canyon. Obviously, there are other people that do a far better job than me at showing you the Grand Canyon. So I encourage you to go check those out or actually just come to the Grand Canyon. Uh, try to get some drone footage of my area tonight, but we're too close to the Grand Canyon and all the tourist helicopters. So the drone wants me to sign my life away if I want to fly in this area, which I will not do because who knows what will happen to me. We are going to figure out where we're going next. Looks like Arizona has a couple nice places. Um, the edge of the world, uh, some cactus forest, then I don't know. I don't know. I just stick around see where see where everything takes us well hopefully you enjoyed some of that entertainment now on to the educational part security so one question that always comes up you see in the boondocking forums and facebook pages and everything is is it safe firstly i've never run into any problems when boondocking yes it is somewhat scary going to places that are pitch black and nobody around especially when you arrive at night so you have no orientation. So one thing I would recommend is try arrive during the day to your boondocking location. Firstly, that gives you peace of mind in your head that you know the scenery and the layout, and that definitely helps sleep easier at night. The next thing I do is if you get to a location and it is full of trash or debris or broken glass and so on, just know that's a high traffic boondocking area and you are probably going to want to avoid that. Not for security per se, but for annoyance of people coming back to that location and doing what they do that got that location to be disgusting and messy that it is already. Next up on the list before I get into bed, I put a couple things next to me when I'm sleeping. Firstly, I put my car keys. The reason for that is if anything were noisy or suspicious outside, I would hit my car alarm. And this goes for bears or people. So I'd hit my car alarm, make a noise, lots of flashing lights. Uh, most times that will deter people in my belief. Next up on the list, I obviously have my cell phone, but I mentioned I do not have service most of the time I boondock. So other thing I keep next to my bed is my Garmin inReach. Now my Garmin inReach is a satellite text messaging slash GPS uh, device. I've made a somewhat of a video about that, so be sure you check that out in the links down below. And that just gives me some communication. If something happens at night, I can at least send a text message to my family members and I know they'll get it because it is a satellite text messaging machine. Now another thing I have inside my camper for security is I have right at the door exiting my camper, I have a can of self-defense spray. So it's like bear spray, it probably is bear spray, but it is for self-defense and it came with a nice mount. So I have that mounted right at the door. So if anything were to happen, it is a nice big bottle. It shoots like 30 feet away and it's got a nice sturdy handle. So if something were happening, I could open the door and spray that at whoever, a bear or a person. 
If you've seen my video about the 100 plus modifications I've done to my camper, you will also know I have put floodlights all around the camper. Now again, this is twofold. Firstly, it does help me at night because sometimes I do arrive at night and parking and finding how to park or where to park, those do help me. So I got lights on the back, the front and the both sides of the camper as well as underneath. So if something were to happen, I could hit all those lights. Now, coinciding with those lights, I do have four cameras around the camper. Again, this is twofold. This helps me for parking and driving because I have a wireless monitor that I keep inside my SUV that lets me see all around the camper when I'm parking or just driving. But at night, I bring that wireless monitor and I put it next to me in bed. It does have night vision. It's not the best night vision. But I do have these lights, so if I hear something, I can turn on all the lights and then I can look at the camera monitor and see if I can see anything. Now the last thing on the list as far as security items, and it all depends on if you're licensed or not, is I carry a firearm. And that is just my personal preference and mainly that's also for bears. Obviously I don't want to shoot anything, I don't want to shoot a bear, I don't want to shoot a person, but if the events arise and all of those things don't work, my sixth or seventh or eighth option is I do have that. I do travel to places that are in the middle of nowhere that have no cell phone service and I just find that's another peace of mind that I have with me. But really guys, it's a controversial topic so do what you want with that. Now I guess one more piece of security that I do have is my dog. It's my little doggy dude, getting chunky, eating all the food, snuggles and he's pretty singing cute. My dog barks at things naturally and if something were to startle him at night he will be barking if someone was trying to get into the door uh, he will bark he will wake me up not saying I wouldn't wake up if someone's getting in the door but that's just an added sense of security and a lot of times people don't like dealing with a dog so traveling with a dog is always a good idea too. Now understand that is a lot of stuff that I've talked about that I have for security but that's what I have and I don't think everyone needs all of that that's just all the levels I take I over prepare all the time and everything I do for whatever reason but that's what I do if you're interested in doing a couple of those now let's talk about what I do for securing my camper when I'm actually leaving it unhooked in a boondock inside and going out adventuring let's start off with inside the camper inside the camper I will normally turn on the music and I'll let the music play not blasting but I'll let the music play now that's for two reasons some national parks don't allow dogs so sometimes I have to leave my dog here and that noise just prevents him from barking and the other reason is if someone were to come up they may think that there is someone inside because there is music playing I do close all the blinds anyway so they wouldn't be able to tell if someone was inside another thing I do is I leave a note on my door saying if my dog is barking, I am sorry for the inconvenience. Here's my cell phone number, please call me. Firstly, my dog does bark sometimes, um, but normally it's just when we're leaving, then he doesn't bark. But if someone reads that sign, they automatically gonna think there's a dog inside. So that's another deterrent. So now let's step outside of the camper. One thing I always do is I triple check everything is locked. Firstly, I make sure my front door is locked, my back door is locked, and then all the storage compartments are locked. Another thing I do is I have a combination cable that goes in my propane tanks and secures those so nobody can take those off. On the rear of my camper, you'll see I have extra gas that I've mounted, and I also have some traction pads in case the tires get stuck in the mud. Those are also with the cable lock that I secure to the ladder. Now, moving on to the hitch. I bought a very expensive $250 hitch lock. This thing is the beefiest hitch lock I've seen, a very unique key, and at the end of the day, it is expensive because firstly, it's heavy and beefy, and it's more difficult to break. I've had trailers my whole life, and you can really tell you get the $24 one, which I've always used, but the $200, $250 one is what I chose to go with this. It secures around the coupler and it also secures inside the ball mount 
and then it is a, a unique key that would be very hard to pick. And then again, the last thing I have is the camera system on the camper. Now the camera system has a micro SD card and it records continuously and just keeps deleting the footage. I've never had to go back to review the footage because nothing's been destroyed when I've left the camper. But if I were, it might be on there. And I do believe since there's cameras on the outside, that is a deterrent to anyone trying to mess with something. Now, a couple of things that I mentioned. Firstly, the camera system and the music. I don't recommend you do that unless you have a solar power system or a large battery bank. Those do draw battery, so be careful of that. But because normally I leave during the day, I'm getting continuous power from the sun anyway, so I'm not worried about the energy consumption. Now, the longest I've stayed at a boondocking site is two days, and I'm sure that adds to me not encountering anything strange. I would assume once you are at a place long enough, people can start seeing your schedules, if you leave, if you go, how many people are with you, and then they can actually take advantage of your schedule. So since I'm never around one place long enough, it doesn't really matter, so no one can learn what I'm doing, so they don't know if I'm there, how many people are, and so on. Now guys, that's a lot of different things I've talked about for security and I want to tell you one thing all of those things I've never used once never had to and I've never felt unsafe the only time I feel unsafe is really me uh, playing in my own head that we're in the middle of nowhere I do believe it's pretty safe I've also felt more unsafe when I stayed at a popular place like a Cracker Barrel overnight or so on because it's a more densely populated area where you know a little noise you won't wake up because it is noisy already but guys if you're thinking about boondocking I I would prepare some security to a point. I wouldn't overdo it like me. I wouldn't underdo it and have nothing. Just be aware things might happen and you just have to have a plan. So guys, if you have any questions about any of my stuff I use for security or keeping my trailer secure, there's a link down below for all the products I use. And if you have any questions, just leave a message down below and I'll be sure to answer them. But guys, thanks a lot for tuning in to episode six. Episode seven will be out in two days. See you then.